Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So today, we need to be continuing our look at all the new cards from Alter Genesis. And today, ladies and gentlemen, it is the turn of Glalie. We are getting towards the end of summer at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. It is not going to be long until winter is here. And certainly this card will be coming out in November, which is very much kind of, well... Eh, you could kind of call it autumn, but it's winter as far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen. So it's time to look at a nice icy cold Pokemon. And I should mention our translation here comes from the lovely Joe over at Cerebi.net. A very lovely person with a very good website. And one that you should be checking on a regular basis. And I say that on a regular basis, but I mean it, ladies and gentlemen. I mean it. So Glalie then, what does it actually do? Well, if we start off having a look at the basics, we've got 120 HP, which is fine for a stage one, but there's plenty of Pokemon out there like Buzzwall, for instance, to hit 120, or Silvalli GX, which I do think is going to come back at some point, that hits 120. And then you can go ahead and combine that with stuff like Volcanion that have 120 as a basic, and you're like, well, it's not amazing. Retreat cost of free, also upsetting. It means no buff padding, no searching it out with Pokemaniac. And the weakness to Metal I actually like. Maybe at some point Metal Dex will come around, countering stuff like Gardevoir and Sylveon, etc. But for the time being, Metal Dex are not big, so this is a good weakness. And you're a Water type. And Water is a great, great weakness to be hitting at the moment. It's a phenomenal weakness to be hitting. Because... Well, Reshiram and Charizard. Blacephalon. Since Welder came out, Fire Dex have been amazing. And now you're hitting all of them for weakness. As far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, that is an absolute win. It's a reason to play this. But we do need some good attacks as well. And I think we've got them. I like this. One Water Energy, 30 damage, flip a coin. If Heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is paralyzed... And discard one energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. So you do 30 damage plus paralysis plus energy denial. Count me in, ladies and gentlemen. Count me in. Because with Ace Roller and Guzma having rotated out, people have started using Tate and Liza. Because Tate and Liza is both a draw card. You shove your hand into your deck, draw five cards. And it is a switch. But if your opponent uses Tate and Liza as a switch, they're literally using their supporter card for the turn, their one and only supporter for the turn, to switch their active Pokemon. That's it. That, that's all they do. That is all the benefit that they get from doing so. It's not exactly terribly inspiring now, is it? And maybe they play switch, but even if they play it, they can't find it. Honestly, the biggest issue you've got here is a skateboard. Because if your opponent has a retreat cost of one, they can use a skateboard to free retreat out of this because it lets you retreat when you're paralyzed. That's an issue. If you hit into a Jirachi, Jirachi goes, oh no, 30 damage. You've almost done half of the damage you need to. I will be retreating for free now while paralyzed. It's not ideal. I did recently show you a Cradley, which does allow you to, well, if your opponent's affected by a special condition, if their Pokemon is, then they can't retreat. So this will work nicely with Cradley, but generally speaking here, you're going to need something a little bit better. Hey-ho. Can't win them all, ladies and gentlemen. So maybe they can get out the active, right? But they're not always going to be able to. They're not always going to have a skateboard. They're not always going to have Tate and Liza or things of that nature. There are going to be plenty of times you trap them in the active. And you're getting rid of an energy. So let's say you're against something like Pikachu and Zekrom. Now, Pikachu and Zekrom's a good example here because their energy acceleration essentially is Tapu Koko Prism Star, but that only accelerates to the bench. And Thunder Mountain, which is a Prism Star Stadium once per game, and its own attack. That's what they have. Which means that if you can hit a Pikachu and Zekrom with this, in theory, you take them down from, let's say, free energy to two. Although often with Thunder Mountain, they'll have two attached. So now they've lost an energy and now they're paralyzed. They better be able to find a way out of it quickly. They can't retreat unless they can find an escape board. But even if they find an escape board, right? 
Pikachu and Zekrom's got a retreat cost of three, so they ain't going to be retreating anyway. So that's good. And they're going to lose an energy. So then next turn, you hit them again, and they lose another energy. And what's, I mean, to be fair, you're eight hit KOing that Pikachu and Zekrom. But if you can keep hitting heads and keep paralyzing them and keep making them lose an energy, they are going to hurt. It's only on a coin flip. And we don't have Victini or any of that anymore. So there's going to be plenty of games you flip tails and it fails. But when you can hit heads here, you can take some of the best Pokemon in the game. You paralyze them so they can't attack you. And you get rid of their energy so they can't attack you next turn. That sounds pretty good to me. And there's even a second attack here that we like quite a bit as well. One water energy, two colorless energy, 120 damage. And then you can't use it next turn. That's a little bit sad. We'll get over it, but it's a little bit sad. Now, in terms of the damage here, you're doing all right, but it's not stunning. 120 is enough to KO Blacephalon. That's beautiful. But it's not enough to KO Reshiram and Charizard. You'll be 30 damage short. Now, what you could do here is use Shrine of Punishment. And with the first attack, Shrine of Punishment is an exceptionally good card in this deck. Because you're going to be buying yourself turns. You're going to be paralyzing your opponent. And while they're paralyzed, they're kind of not able to do very much. Which essentially means an extra turn of Shrine of Punishment. Which means two extra damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. This is a good deck to be doing that. And of course, if you hit them for 60 with the first attack, then this attack will take them out quite easily. But that's the first one. If you can get Shrine of Punishment, then the second one, which is all you'll need, remember, Tag Team GXs give up free prizes. The second one will go down nicely here. And then they gone, ladies and gentlemen. They gone. I like this. In terms of the energy cost, you've got triple acceleration energy. But being a water Pokemon, you're far better off using Naganadal to accelerate energy to itself. And then using Quagsire to move it into the active. We've lost Aqua Patch, which sucks, but it's still a combo that works without Aqua Patch. Is 120 enough? Sometimes. It'll get Zapdos. It'll two-hit KO most things, especially if you're using Shrine of Punishment, which I think for this deck you probably should be. It's not the most damage we've ever seen, but it's quite easy to get rolling, and it's on a single prize Pokemon. I can live with this. I think the first attack is what makes this really good. I think the second attack is a nice amount of damage. It's good for finishing Pokemon off. It's, it's good in a hurry, etc. But I think the first attack is where this lies. I don't know if I see Glalie as a Pokemon in and of itself. I don't know if this deck will work with just Glalie. But Paralyze, get rid of energy, buy yourself some time. I mean, one of the cards that I am irrationally excited about, which is going to be coming out in Ultra Genesis, is the new Waylord. Basically, the new Waylord's got 200 HP as a single prize Pokemon, and it can use buff padding, and it's got functional attacks. Not good attacks, functional attacks. So maybe in a deck like that, Glalie's first attack buys you enough time to get Waylord up and rolling, and then your opponent's got to knock out 5 200 HP Waylord in order to win the game. Yeah, that's not going to be the easiest thing they've ever done, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, if you're using a Waylord deck, well, Waylord can do more damage, but for four energy, for free energy, Glalie's a slightly better attacker. That's where I see Glalie's niche here. Like the first attack, a lot. But it really is a buying time to set up in a water deck kind of attack. And the second attack is fine, but it really is a, meh, when I don't have anything better. I'm giving it between three and four Wossies, and that seems slightly overgenerous. We don't give half Wossies, that would be barbaric. But I do like this, and I want to play around with Waylord. And I'm looking at this and going, that wouldn't be a bad attacker in a Waylord deck not to start setting up. So there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I think about the new Glalie, but I would like to know what you think about the new Glalie. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, me nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wossy plays where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any pokemon in but by far the most important thing as always 
look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.